channel and welcome to my ingredients analysis, application demonstration, and wear test of the Chanel Ultra Lay Tint Velvet Foundation. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you hit that notification bell so you never miss any of my upcoming videos. My videos help you to become a more informed consumer because I dive deep into the ingredients going into our cosmetics, skincare, hair care, and dental products using evidence-based research. You should absolutely know the ingredients going into your personal care products, and I'm here to help you do just that. If you're not interested in the ingredients, feel free to skip ahead. I have timestamps in my description box below, as well as clickable timestamps pinned as the first comment in this video. I do wanna say there are two ingredients that give me concern, so please make sure you click on the timestamp that says concerning ingredients, just so you know what is going into this formula and onto your skin. Now let's get into the Chanel foundation ingredients. The Chanel foundation is water-based, and the first set of ingredients we're going to take a look at are the active ingredients. We have two sunscreens in this formula, and Octanoxy is a chemical sunscreen. That means it's going to sink into the skin, and as the skin absorbs UV rays, the Octanoxy is going to form a chemical reaction. It's going to turn those rays into heat, which will then be dissipated from the skin. Titanium dioxide is a mineral sunscreen. That means it sits on top of the skin and it reflects the UV rays so they're not absorbed into the skin. The next category of ingredients are the emollients, and emollients make our skin feel very soft, smooth, and supple, and they also help to reduce the friction between the foundation itself and our skin when the formula is applied. This foundation contains a few different silicones, and silicones serve a few different purposes. Silicones help to reduce transepidermal water loss because they form this cross-link lattice-like structure on the skin, and oxygen and nutrients can pass through, but water molecules cannot. That means the moisture you have in your skin is going to stay there, which is a great thing for me because I am 37 years old with very dry skin that's prone to fine lines and wrinkles. Silicones also serve as texture enhancers and that's because they have a very silky feeling to them. They're very smooth, so they make the foundation feel a bit more luxurious. Silicones also help the formula to glide very evenly and seamlessly onto the skin as does dicapryl carbonate. Now, this ingredient also serves a couple different purposes, and it helps the foundation to spread very easily. It also gives the skin a very velvety feeling, and remember, the word velvet is in the title of this foundation, so Chanel has really emphasized that, and it makes the skin not feel greasy or sticky at all. All. Dicapryl carbonate is also a solvent, and I will get into the solvents in just a minute, and you do not want to miss the solvents. We also have tocopherol in this formula, and tocopherol is an antioxidant, it's vitamin E, and it has skin smoothing benefits. The last emollient I want to share with you is the Biosaccharide Gum 1 Lysine. This is an interesting ingredient because it kicks in about three hours after the foundation has been applied and gives the skin a moisturizing boost. It's also a texture enhancer and it has a very soft touch and leaves the skin with a soft feeling. This formula does have quite a few thickeners and thickeners are going to help to add bulk to the foundation. I do want to point out that steric acid also contains many fatty acids and fatty acids are wonderful if you're over 25 because they help to replace what has been lost in the lipid matrix on our stratum corneum. Our lipid matrix helps to make our skin very supple and youthful and in our mid-20s it of course begins to deplete, 
the onset of the aging process, so we want to replenish it as much as we can. It's made of fatty acids, ceramides, and cholesterol, so I was happy to see that steric acid is in this formula. We also have methyl methacrylate cross polymer, and this is a film former. It's going to help the foundation adhere to the skin. It also is an absorbent. It has a bit of a mattifying quality to it, so if you do have oily skin, it will help to absorb any excess sebum that you may have. Hydrated silica is also a thickener as well as an absorbent. Now let's talk about these solvents. Solvents help to dissolve other ingredients within the formula to make the foundation uniform and consistent. I bought this foundation just when I was online shopping and I didn't look at the ingredients label until the foundation arrived at my house and I have to say, my heart sank with what I'm about to tell you because this foundation contains that one ingredient I never, ever, ever want to put on my skin, which is alcohol. Alcohol is pro-aging, it's pro-drying, it is a nightmare for skin. And unfortunately, it's in this foundation. Now, we don't know how much alcohol is in the product because it's after that 1% mark. And to know about 1% indicators, please take a look at my how to read ingredients and in skincare labels video because I go really into depth. But in a nutshell, when you look at an ingredients label, it's not in descending order. And there's a reason for that. It's to keep the formula a trade secret. So please go watch that video video if you're not aware about the 1% rule. So because of that, we just don't know how much alcohol is in the formula, but even if it's just one drop, I really don't want it on my skin. Alcohol at first can seem to be a nice ingredient to have in skincare and in foundations because it's going to help all the other ingredients absorb into the skin. It is a skin penetration enhancer. And if you do have oily skin, you'll feel that your skin is looking so matte and so wonderful, but it strips the skin. And then all of a sudden, if you notice you have red skin, your skin is itchy, it's starting to flake you're probably using a product with alcohol. So I have to say, I am so incredibly disappointed about this ingredient. With that being said, I will of course still share my honest review, my honest thoughts. If the foundation looks wonderful on my skin, I will by of course let you know, but I'm still not happy this ingredient is in here. Now I did mention earlier there was two ingredients I wasn't crazy about, and the next one is fragrance. And the ingredient is written as fragrance. Well, what does that mean? We have no idea because it is Chanel's special fragrance. It's considered a trade secret. They don't need to tell us. It could be hundreds of chemicals. We just don't know. And because there's no transparency, all I can say is it's the wild, wild west when it comes to these fragrances. And let's hope that they don't have any other aging, drying, skin irritating ingredients within the fragrance ingredient. To wrap up the ingredients within this formula, we of course have a few different opacifying agents and opacifying agents make the formula more opaque. That means less clear, less translucent. They add sparkle and shine to products as well as color. And there is mica in this formula and mica is a natural mineral with sparkle and shine. There's also talc and I know talc has been in the news in the past few years. However, the FDA has approved cosmetic grade talc for consumers and I will put the FDA's link to that down below if you want to read up a little more on it. This formula also contains seroconium hectorite. This is a suspending agent, which means it's an ingredient that's going to help prevent other heavier ingredients within the formula from sinking to the bottom. We also have one surfactant in this formula, and the purpose of this ingredient is to keep all the ingredients together and prevent them from separating. Finally, we have phenoxyethanol as our preservative, and this is a very common and safe preservative that I find in nearly every single cosmetics and skincare product I review. That wraps up the ingredients in the Chanel foundation. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed learning about them and comment down below and let me know what you think of the alcohol in the formula. Does that bother you? I would love to know. 
Now let's move on to product packaging. The Chanel Ultra Lay Tint Velvet Foundation comes in this little black box. It does say it is a blurring smooth effect foundation with a velvet matte finish and a broad spectrum SPF 15 sunscreen. It is 30 milliliters, which is one fluid ounce and retails for 50 US dollars. On the backside, there is information on the ingredients label and this one is a bit different because it does have the active ingredients, which always has to be followed by uses, directions, warnings. And then on the side of it, the ingredients label continues and the inactive ingredients are listed as well. When I open up the box inside, I can see the foundation and it does also have this tiny little booklet which has the same information in so many different languages about the foundation. The foundation itself is in this very sleek looking black bottle and it is tiny. It's about the size of my pinky. On the back side, it says to shake well before use. It's made in France and the open jar symbol on the bottom of the bottle has a 12M, which means once you start using this product, you have 12 months until it expires. I'm now going to apply the foundation to my skin and I do want to let you know that I have my skincare on. I do not have on any foundation primers because I want to see how this foundation performs on its own. The shade I'm using is BR12. I'm going to give the foundation a good shake and put some of the product on the back side of my hand. I do smell a floral type of scent, a perfumey scent. I like it, but it's definitely there. And I can see as I'm just moving my hand a little bit, the foundation is quite liquid. It is moving down my hand pretty quickly. I'm now going to apply the product using my Beauty Blender sponge. It's now been about 10 minutes since I applied the foundation and I think it's had enough time to settle into my skin. I think my skin looks very dewy, it looks very soft. I can smell the fragrance, so if you are sensitive to scents, keep that in mind. I do feel like I have some perfume on my face. A lovely perfume, but a perfume nonetheless. My skin looks really fresh, it looks healthy, and my lines under my eyes so far do not look exacerbated, but we'll have to see with the test of time how the foundation will stand up. I'm now going to put on the rest of my makeup and I'll check right back in with you. I've now put on the rest of my makeup and I have to say so far, I think my makeup looks great and everything was very easy to apply on top of this foundation and really easy to blend as well. I am feeling some tightness to my skin on my chin and a little bit on my cheeks and I also am really smelling the fragrance from the foundation. It seems to have gotten stronger since I put the rest of my makeup on and I just feel like I've applied a lot of perfume. So I'm going to now just go about my day. I'll check back in with you later on and let you know how my skin is feeling and how it's looking. And as I am talking to you right now, I have to say, I really am feeling that tightness in my face already. So this feels like it might be a little bit too mattifying, too drying for my skin, which of course can be from the absorbent ingredients as well as that dreaded alcohol ingredient. So I'll check back in with you later on. It's been quite a while since I saw you last and I wanted to check back in with you and share how the Chanel Ultra Latent Velvet Foundation has been feeling and looking on my skin as well as whether I would recommend purchasing this foundation or not. It is quite dark here now in Dubai and I have changed my outfit as well as changed my lipstick because I'm about to go out to dinner with one of my girlfriends. 
I have to say, as far as how my skin looks, I think the foundation looks fantastic. I like the soft matte finish and it does have a really nice soft velvety touch. The foundation has not settled into my fine lines at all and I think my skin still looks quite fresh. Because there is that slight mattifying quality to the foundation, it hasn't made my skin look oily, not that it ever does, but usually during the day I do need to touch up my face with powder and I don't feel like I need to do that with this foundation. Now, as far as how my skin feels, that is a whole different story because my chin and my cheeks actually feel quite itchy and irritated right now. My skin does feel dry, although it doesn't necessarily look dry, but I'm just very conscious of this area as my, of my face as I'm talking to you. And I have to attribute that to both the alcohol in this product as well as the fragrance. The fragrance is so strong that I feel like I have just dunked my entire head into a bowl of floral perfume. I cannot believe the scent of this foundation and is actually giving me a slight headache. So if you are sensitive to floral scents or perfumey type of makeup products, this is one you should absolutely stay away from. And I have to imagine it's the alcohol in the formula that is just making my skin feel so incredibly dry and irritated right now. If I wasn't going out to dinner with my friend, I would just wash off all my makeup right now and just slather on some skin conditioning moisturizer. I almost feel like I'm betraying myself by wearing this foundation and I am, absolutely serious in saying that. So overall, as you can imagine, I do not recommend this foundation. I just do not like the alcohol in the formula and I really don't like the fragrance scent. It does look beautiful on the skin. I do think this foundation would be really nice if you're having professional photos or for one-off events like a wedding, graduation, that sort of thing where you, where you can use it for one day and then just not use it again because it does have that ethereal quality and it looks so pretty on the skin. But the thing is, I just know that it's not a quality formula. And Chanel should have not put alcohol in the foundation. They could have used something much better instead. Alcohol is such a cheap ingredient. And for a customer that's already paying $50 for a foundation, I'm sure that they would shell out a few more bucks just to have better ingredients within the formula. We expect high quality from Chanel. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'm not by any means knocking the Chanel Beauty brand at all and it's just hard for me to recommend a product that I know is not good for the skin. Although I will say it does look beautiful on. Thanks again, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, comment down below and let me know if you use any Chanel foundations or if you know whether or not the foundations you're using contain alcohol. Maybe if you've been having a lot of red irritated skin lately, it's not the weather, it's not your skincare, maybe you're using a foundation with alcohol in it. Thanks again, see you soon, don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Subscribe now to Lauren O'Connell Beauty TV and let's navigate together through the world of beauty.